All right, I like to walk around, but I'm going to try to avoid that and just uh, stay here and not grab the mic. Um, I have material for this, but I'm flexible to kind of drift whichever way um, questions lead. So if you have questions, please don't uh, wait until the end. Um, interrupt me. I'll ask again for questions at the end. But um, if, if you want to talk about anything I'm talking about, just raise your hand, and I'll try to spot you and, um, and, and address that. Um, but uh, I'm going to talk about the badge, and I'll end by talking about some of the challenges on the badge, unless everybody tells me they want more time to work on it. But OK, so this year's badge was um, completely different than a lot of badges that we've done. I, I say that every year. But this, this one I'm, is based on uh, crypto. All the, all the challenges are crypto-based. And I really wanted to do something um, on solar power. And so this badge, if you've noticed, it has a large solar, not, I say large, but as a small solar cell at the bottom. Um, there's no battery in the badge. Uh, once that solar cell powers up a capacitor on the back enough to refresh the screen, then the screen will change to a random image, um, one of the many puzzles that are on the badge. The, oh, what are these called? The puzzle, what is this called? The word? Crossword, crossword. thank you. Thank you, crossword puzzle. Um, the solutions are on the badge, or at least the hints to the crosswords are on the badge. On, you can see on the back, it, one through five is in the um, hieroglyphics, hieroglyphics there. Um, and then the other up to 15, so the other 10 are images that it will scroll, scroll through, and those images hint to the, the word that would be the solution. Um, I made a huge mistake, though, powering this on solar in Utah in April. And that mistake is I assumed it would be spring by April. Um, but as you can see, we're, we're still in winter or third winter. Um, but uh, just, I was just, it was just snowing, what, two hours ago today. And that really puts a damper on getting solar panel, uh, solar energy. So here's kind of some of the designs. Uh, we did, this last piece size was in December, right? So I actually had started on this badge before that one was over. This image down in the bottom right is my prototype that I brought here and stuck in a window to make sure it'll at least work. Um, that prototype, you can see it has a larger solar panel on it. And then I've just got the e-paper display showing um, what the current voltage is of the capacitor, how many, dis how many um, seconds, or not seconds, yeah, how many intervals. So that two represents 20 seconds between updates. So it's basically telling me that it was able to, in 20 seconds, get enough power to refresh the screen again. And that's when it's sitting in the sun. Um, not in the sun, that's very different. And, and we'll talk about that. And then the image is just the KiCad 3D renders of what the badge should look like um, before I shipped it off to um, the assembler. You'll notice that has a larger cap. My prototypes had a larger cap on it. And a lot of my time was spent both trying to minimize how much power I needed to refresh the screen and how much power I utilized when I was sleeping or to refresh the screen. And every, every improvement allowed me to get a smaller solar panel and a smaller capacitor. And I was hoping to get it even smaller on the capacitor, but I didn't quite make it. So here, I spent a lot of my time analyzing power consumption of the badge. And this is the power consumption as it does a refresh. Um, it's really, really small. It uses less than 20 millijoules of power. And that's really hard to convey how much a millijoule is. So well, let's say um, in, an hour, in an hour, the badge uses 1.7 milliwatts. And we'll equate that to one penny, right? Um, for reference, an LED would use 30 milliwatts just, just turning on an LED is 30 milliwatts. So you can see, like, this is the amount of power I'm playing with, like 1 30th of what you use just for an LED. Um, a Raspberry Pi, for example, would you, it uses 4.5 watts. So that's like 25 to 50 roll. I think that's 50. 50 rolls of pennies to one penny of what the badge is using. It's really not much. Um, and the downside to that is, is the badge doesn't interact really well, right? Because it most of the time, it is in a deep, deep sleep waiting for enough power to even just turn on the screen. That's kind of the downside to this design, is there's not a lot of back and forth, because it just doesn't have the cycles or the power to, to spend waiting for user input. 
Um, so along the way, these are the different solar panels I, I went through trying to get the badge. I started with that large one, and I give two numbers here. The top number is what the, the solar panel is supposed to be able to do, and that's under nominal conditions. Under perfect sun, it could provide 600, milli, 600 millijoules. However, in typical sunlight in here in Utah or a, a rare environment, I got about 10 out of it. So it, it's a whole lot smaller than what um, you know, they're, they're touted as. And then you just keep going down the chain. Um, the middle one, this kind of squarish looking one, is a different type of solar panel. And so it, um, for its size, it doesn't produce a lot of electricity. It's a, I'm, a, I, I'm not even going to try to say the word. But it was specifically designed, that solar panel works, to work off of indoor lights, like fluorescent lights, rather than um, uh, wavelengths from the sun. So I was thinking maybe that would work better when we could actually have it work indoors. Uh, but that one was horrible. And so I got down to the second to last one. I wanted to get down to that uh, very tiny one on the, so on the end. And technically, the badge will work with that littler one if it's in the sun for longer and a lot and, and, a, and a perfect sun. And I'm really glad I didn't try to go with that one because, like you said, today's cloudy. It wouldn't have worked if I, if I tried to force that. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, that's weird, my laptop didn't update, but those did. So um, the thing I want to talk about, what I didn't really realize, I kind of knew, but I didn't really know, is how well your eyes automatically accumulate to the current level of light. And so it's hard for me to gauge, like, oh, it's a sunny day, this is good sun, and it's, oh, it's bright in my office, that's about the same. They're not about the same. So all of the solar panels were rated for bright sun, which will put out... Um, about 1,000 watts per meter squared. Um, um, but in an overcast sky, that's down by a power of 10. So in an overcast sky, there's one-tenth the amount of power being able to be generated by a solar panel. Um, we talk about like department stores, grocery stores. It just keeps going down from there. Um, office space is one hundredth of what there would be outside. This, I wouldn't consider office space lighting. This is even worse than office space lighting, this room here, right? Like it's, it's actually pretty dark. So although the solar panel can produce more, it has to be in those nominal conditions, which presents a problem for me because like, I could use the bigger solar panel so that I can get the light I need in this office, but then as soon as you step outside, that's way too much power for the badge to handle, right? So if I did a bigger solar panel to accommodate that, then I had to have additional circuitry to handle the case where it's way more than the capacitor is meant for. And so it's this balancing game, um, be trying, to, trying to encourage trying to find the right um, range. And, and I just try to encourage everyone to go outside. That was my solution. Um, but again, it's snowing. So that was probably not the right solution. Um, but uh, yeah, that's about the badge design. I, about the puzzles, I got a lot of my inspirations from these two books. I don't know if any of you have looked at them or you guys are uh, crypto or puzzle freaks. These books are a lot of fun. Um, they have a lot of hard challenges. And the answers are in the book. Well, for most of the puzzles, the answers are in the book. But they're very, they're, there's a really good set of brain teasers. Um, I'd highly encourage you, if you guys kind of like this kind of thing, to pick up those books. They're just fun to have on your shelf, right? The, flump, the thrum, thumb through um, when you have spare time. Man. Uh, but with that, I wanted to say, first off, thank you to all those that helped build the badge and helped um, test the badge. I had two testers. Paul, I saw Paul. And then there was another individual that was testing, but I don't see them here. Raise your hand if you are one of my beta testers with the puzzles. Yeah. So Paul, thank you very much for, for testing these puzzles. I, I throw things at him and make him do all the legwork to see if it was actually solvable. And then all these guys, um, most of the assembly was done in China except for the screens. And what was the other thing we needed to do? I think it was, and then just packaging it all. So all these guys made an assembly line where they would attach the, the screens on the back, tape them down, or put some double tape, to put them down on the front, and then package them all up with the, the crossword puzzle and everything for you guys. So really thankful for all of them for that. So with that, um, do you guys want to talk? First, before we go to the puzzles, do you have any questions about the badge itself? Or do you want to talk about the puzzles? If you don't want to talk about the puzzles, uh, now's probably a good time to leave if you want to spend some time working on them at home. Yes, I see one over here. What does the button do? Yes, so the button was actually for me more than for you, but it does do, the button is a reset um, for the chip. Um, there's a power, so it needs at least 
five volts to be able to refresh the screen. The capacitor needs to get up to that level. But the chip can turn on at 1.8 volts. So if you hit that refresh button, or reset button, it'll immediately, the, the eye of raw will blink really quick just to say it's on. That tells, you, that tells me that you've got one, at least 1.8 volts, and two, the chip's working. Um, and so that's, that was really my way of um, quality assurance when they went through the line to make sure it would at least blink the light and know that the chip was working. But all, it, it will reset the device, um, and the devices are set to show the B-Sides logo the first time it has power. So if you keep hitting refresh, you're always just going to see, or you keep hitting reset, you're always going to see the B-Sides logo first before it goes to any other screen. But that was really the only point of that button. Yeah, there isn't a lot of interactive um, features. There's one thing that you can do to change how it behaves other than the reset button. But um, other than that, there's not a lot of interaction with it. It's kind of passive. Um, you could, there's, there's two chips on there. There's a flash chip and the chip itself. Um, you could actually replace the images. And, and once I paste the code up there, you can see how, so if you want to put your own images you're on this and then you know, have it hang in your office, that's something you can do with it too. But that's kind of an advanced level thing. Uh, any other questions before we get to puzzles? Thank you for that. That was a good one. Yes? No, no, there was no capacitive touch buttons. Again, that was one of those features that I, I, like, I can't have the, the chips in such a deep sleep. It, it can't be waiting for cents. Um, but uh, it would have been nice to do. I was just so limited with what I could do with no batteries. But, yeah. OK, uh, I'm going to talk puzzles. So these are all the screens that the badge can go through. I don't think many of you had seen the bottom half of those screens, actually. The top, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then skipping number 14, you would, you would see the, the top 12, except for the one that looks like static. Um, and it, it will cycle through those screens. Each, most of them have a number in the top corner, and that, course, that says which puzzle it corresponds to. There are a few that don't, one the B-side screen, and then two this one right next to the B-side screen. Um, I'm going to talk about it first. <laughs> It, um, anybody recognize that logo? Yes, that's Stargate. So they used a cipher in Stargate they called the Ancients Cipher, and that's what that cipher is down below there. So right below it, it has these little symbols, and that says, free the seraph. Uh, seraph's another term for you know, peasant worker or indentured servant. And on the back, you notice there are a bunch of uh, guys harvesting wheat and with resistors tied to their legs. If you remove those resistors, then the badge will open up and give you the other 10 screens. The other 10 screens are all hints to help solve the original puzzles. And so they are all using the same substitution cipher that the first five puzzles on the back of the screen are using. Um, OK. So uh, I'm going to start just going through these. The first five are pretty straightforward, that they're a substitution cipher, that once you solve it, hey, yes, I see a question. Yeah, you should, sorry, you should, you, you should, 15 should show you, 14 shouldn't, or 14 will show up. You see there's two 14s up there? You should get the one with the I and the QR code and 15, but you shouldn't be a, the, man, I'm making this more confusing than it is. Everything up to that bird, you should be able to get without taking off those resistors. Asterix, the, the fuzzy one, won't show up ever. Um, and the fuzzy one will get, I'll tell you why. It's, um, it was an issue that just didn't work so well. But you should be able to get everything up to, through 15. So all the puzzles are available. All the hints are not available until you take the resistors off. OK, let's walk through some of these. This puzzle, um, this one is known as the Cheryl's birthday puzzle. It was actually based off of a high school mathematics competition uh, question where Cheryl gave her friends hints to when her birthday is. And you had to use data back and forth about um, what each of the people used. So for example, this one, in this case, um, you're given, what, eight words at the top. And Cleopatra and King Tut both know part of those words. Like Cleopatra knows the first letter, and King Tut knows the second letter. And based on the statements they say back and forth to each other, you can narrow down what the answer is. 
So for example, Cleopatra says, I don't know what the clue is, but I know that King Tut doesn't know, know it either. That's enough to say that whatever letter she knows is ambiguous enough that none of the tell letters are alone. So for example, um, the first two rows have the letters end with the letter E or letter L, which don't end, no other words end in those. So for Cleopatra to know that Tut couldn't know the answer, she had to not, she had to know that the first letter wasn't B or J. Is that confusing? So that's how you, you roll out the first two based on her statement there. And now King Tut responds with, I didn't know, but now I do. So that allows us to rule out things that he, if he, he knows those two rows, and that would allow us, I'm going to try to say this without confusing people. Um, if he knew G, he still wouldn't know the answer, right? Because it, it's got to be one of the two bottom rows, and G is ambiguous because it's, it shows up there. So what he knew had to be some other letter than G. So that la leaves us with leap, rack, and rain. And then Cleopatra says, then I also know the clue. So she, it couldn't be rack or rain because those two both start with L, so it had to be leap. So the answer to that part would be leap, some blank leap is the, the hint to solve the, uh, the crossword puzzle for that one. That was a interesting, a kind of a fun brain teaser. Um, seven, seven is just an image to have that, to, anybody, if you, have, if you solve this, you can tell me. I'd love to hear your, how you came to this more than I did. So um, if you have an answer, you're good. If not, I can talk about what I tried to tell you here. This one is not crypto bay related, but rather they're all hinting at something that occurred. They're talking about an event. Um, the big eagle in the middle is very reminiscent of a three-letter agency's um, symbol. Um, the guys down at the middle, which appear to be, I would say, using a telephone, and somebody's listening in. Um, the, their symbols on the side, they represent uh, using the same cipher, MK something seven. And that's the top. We see the EFF um, symbol, or I'm going, I'm going, let's see, left to right. That's supposed to rent 30 years, a broken lock, a swordfish, not a swordfish, uh, so shooting. What? Yes. And then the ship is a clipper ship. These are all hinting at the clipper chip, which was a NSA chip used back in the 90s to intercept encrypted communications on the telephones. So that's what the hints, they were all clip, uh, mentioning there. Oh, skipjack. It's, it's right on my slide. OK, uh, this one is hinting at the four square algorithm. So there's some crypto at the top. Um, that you got four squares with some words. Um, Four squares, a encryption algorithm where you put two words in, or you can put up to four, but usually you only use two words to start the box. And then you start in the top left and grab the letter that's over in the top right. And then you, for the second letter, you start in the top bottom, or the, the bottom right, and grab the letter in the bottom left. So that A in the top, I mean, this is, I guess I can't say so, but um, look, look up. Uh, the Wikipedia Foursquare to see how to do that. There's a lot of pages that can tell you how to do that. And then for your two words, you would just use snake and sphinx. Um, this one was a hard one. It was very obtuse in my mind. Um, but Orion's belt, if you looked at the stars that were lit up and, and drew the dots between them, that would make a elliptic curve. And that was your clue for that one. Is the, the answer was an elliptic curve. That one was pretty obtuse. This one is a rather difficult one. It taken great. Uh, directly from the GCHQ, GCHQ handbook, puzzle book. There was a puzzle based the similar way. The resistors around the outside represent a fractional resistance. So um, you can see here, like two resistors in parallel, that's half of one resistance if you put resistors in parallel. And so if you looked at the first row, second column, one half, then you get the letter T. Um, and you would just go through each resistor around the chain to put together the solution there. This is a Rubius puzzle. This is probably one of the easier ones. Um, you've seen like, if you remember, the, some of you might remember the old um, concentration game show where you get uh, images and you had to spell it out. So this would be a knot without the T, bone without the B. So you'd say not own, known, um, rain, with a, rain plus a P, that would be praying, but plain text. It would be if known plain text is the, the key to that one. It's a Rubius, um, more of a tongue te teaser type.
we'll keep going. This one was very difficult. I, I don't think I'll spell this one out. Um, but this is assembly code, or pseudo assembly code, which will iterate over a set of numbers and push a certain set of those numbers to the stack. The numbers it pushes to the stack are a set of primes and a particularly interesting set of primes if you're a, a crypto um, fan. That it's the, the mi miser primes, or mercener uh, primes, sorry, excuse me. Um, this one I didn't even write a description for. This one is just binary code, but you're just missing some bits. Um, the, the, the things are broken, but um, as ASCII code in, assembly, in binary, there's a lot of bits that you can not use. Like the, the first bit of any ASCII character are always zero, 01 if it's a capital, or zero, 00 if it's lowercase. And so you can get away with not having the first two bits in general and just still decode ASCII. Um, and then these, some of these others are missing bits in the end, but that just means, hey, it's either an O or a P, right? Like, as you start to bit the rest of this together, you should be able to deduce um, what that says. And the, the, the actual puzzle that you're trying to solve with that has to do with that as well. So 14, this is one I, I talked about, I kind of got confusing with. The original image I wanted to show was the static, but the static, to solve this, oh, I gotta show this to you. This is kind of fun. This is how you solve this one. This is called visual cryptography. And as soon as you line them up exactly right, a message shows up. And that's, what, that's how that's supposed to be solved. However, if you try to take an image of it and do that manually, it's not gonna work because the, the, you're skew, right? You, you're not just directly lined. So I had this other image with a QR code on it and the QR code takes you to the digital version of that image so that you could do this without having to take a picture of it. But um, yeah, pl play around with digital or visual cryptography, because it, it's pretty cool just to, it, it's so weird how all of a sudden all that static turns into something sensible. And then 15, 15 was um, using flag semaphore, so each of those little Egyptians on the lake are holding a certain flag pattern, and uh, if you can use the, 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 just the simple uh, flag semaphore encoding to decode what they're trying to say. Okay, that is it. I really wanted to appreciate, uh, thank you guys for sticking around. Um, I had prizes for just about anybody who solved it, but I have plenty of them left. And those prizes are a little uh, Eye of Raw pin and a, a, like a solar panel. So if you want, uh, just this tiny one, if you wanted to try with your own circuits at home, come grab one. And then I have some deep, uh, flash programmers. They that I wanted to give out to those guys in case you want to try to uh, hack on your own badge. If any of you are interested, please just come on up and we'll hand those out. And I mean, I think there's probably enough for everybody in here if you want one, so. But uh, thank you guys very much. I hope you guys enjoyed it, it or at least we're, we're okay with wearing it around your neck while you were here. But uh, thanks, guys. I appreciate it.